Here at the Manning Center, I'm with Dr. Zudi Jasser. He is with the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Yes. That's correct? Yes, okay. Sir. And I've been watching you on Fox News. I've been watching you on with my friend Glenn Beck, talking about, as as an observant Muslim, mm -hmm. that there is a battle for the soul of Islam. And and I, I'm, I'm happy that you are out there making this argument and that you're bringing the argument here to the Manning Center because I think sometimes there's this this false idea that Muslims that go to mosque will always fall on the Islamist side, and you're saying no. Oh, absolutely, and I think, you know, as, as, as fearful as the Obama administration and so many in the liberal community are in addressing Islam and Islamism, there is nothing more American than fighting back against theocracy. And I think this is ultimately where we are in our time in history as Muslims, is that this isn't a battle against Islam, but within the House of Islam is this battle against the theocrats, what I call the Islamist global mafia. There's domestic lobbyists that include this Islamist mafia, and then there's global countries. Like the brother Brotherhood and other organizations. Yep, so the populist movements are like the Muslim Brotherhood, Jamaat Islami in Pakistan, uh, ISIS as its most militant variety, and then their progenitors, the boot camps for ISIS and Muslim Brotherhood are Saudi Arabia, uh, Egyptian dictatorship prior in which these are Islamists but they're oligarchs. That marriage for the last 50 to 80 years has created this cauldron the Arab awakening opened up and now there's a debate happening within Islam that's going to be very bloody, no different than the Reformation and, and actually the American Revolution, French Revolution and other revolutions for freedom and liberty were against theocracy. Okay, let me ask you about, um, you talk, I, I believe you're a military veteran, correct? Yes, 11 okay. years in the U.S. Navy. Wow. Well, thank you for your service, different country, but I always, I always appreciate military service. I want to ask you about this then. You always identify as you're an American. Yes. You are an American Muslim. We saw the release of the video from Michael Zahav Bibo yesterday, and I don't think he is different than other jihadists in that he sees himself as separate from the society that he grew up in that allowed him to thrive and eventually turn to his Islamism. So is, is that part of, of the battle, is, is getting people to say that, uh, that they belong to the society they live in, that they are Canadians, they are Americans, rather than I am a Muslim and, and, and that is the only thing I will identify with. It's, it's not only part of the battle, it is the battle. That is the core. Terrorism is a tactic. It is a symptom, no different than anti-Semitism, hate of the West. All these are symptoms of the ideology. That supremacist ideology is Islamo-patriotic movement. Jihadism is based on the sense that Muslim youth, wherever they are, feel an affinity, a, def a need to defend the identity of the Islamic State. The only way to diffuse that or the antidote against it is the identity of the liberal secular state that and I felt my parents felt American the moment they left the plane in 67 escaped persecution in Syria came here they said you know this country America gave us the ability to practice our faith more freely than any so-called Islamic state so this is the problem when you get Islamist states and the new what I call the neo caliphate is the organization of Islamic co cooperation if you get them to help you against Islamism or Islamo patriotism it's like getting the meth dealers to help you with drug violence I mean they, they are fueled on the Islamic state uh, supremacism they're not going to help you with liberty American American or Canadian uh, a sense of uh, loyalty to this country I want to ask you a couple things. One, that deal with the issue of supremacism. One is the use of language, and the other is, in my view, the attempt to bring the Sharia-type elements mm -hmm. to this continent. Uh, but first, the language, uh, jihadism. Prime Minister Stephen Harper is being criticized for using terms like Islamicism, which you've just used, jihadism, that he should use terms like President Obama uses, which is violent extremism. What's your take on it? All I can say is that if you want to enable Muslims like myself, like Tariq Fatah, like Raheel Raza, Farzana Hassan, all these Canadian Muslims that are really the ones, the Muslim Canadian Congress really is the, is the group that prevented Sharia law from separating out Muslims in Canada. If you want to empower them, you have to call it Islamism. You have to call it jihadism. If we're going to have, as Tariq calls it, a jihad against jihad, you have to call it that in order to defeat it. You can't defeat, the West didn't defeat Christian theocracy by calling it 
uh, you know, some type of autocracy. It was a theocracy. So jihadism has to be put into the dustbin of history. And the only way to do that, because right now by marginalizing us, by having President Obama become the excommunicator in chief, he excommunicates us and makes the current mafia of Islamist governments and movements name and become the leaders of our community when in fact they are the core problem. All right. So there's been the issue of lawfare, and I know you followed Ezra Levant's case with yeah. publishing the Danish cartoons and then being taken to human rights tribunals, but that's not, that's not all. We've had court cases go to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court decide to throw out hundreds of years of legal tradition and say that Muslim women can testify in court as witnesses against an accused with the niqab on. We've just had a lower court ruling saying that you can uh, take the oath of citizenship with the niqab on. To me, these are attempts to, to undermine Canadian values and, and traditions that uphold the liberty and freedom that we cherish. And it, it, to me, it's, it's a bit of Sharia by stealth. Am I overreacting when I say, look, you want to wear the niqab? Go ahead and wear the niqab. But there are certain times in a Western society that you can't. I couldn't agree with you more, but let me reframe that a little bit in that it's not about Canadian or American values. It's about freedom and liberty. And that will constantly conflict against jihadism, against Islamism, against the misogyny of interpretations of Sharia law. So what they're doing is using our freedoms in Canada and America to create blasphemy laws in this country. So by doing that, they then prevent the reform necessary. So we should get Muslims to have platforms to debate these Islamists and say, you know what, it's not about Canada. It's about we as liberal Muslims who believe in our own choices. I mean, my wife and I, for example, have our own Islamic marriage contract, but we believe in the equality of each other in our faith. Mm -hmm. And we want to ask five imams and then we'll make our own sixth opinion. You see, that is intrinsically American. While the Islamists want you to take spoon feed Islamist Sharia from their leaders and not give you the ability to make up your own mind. And that is theocracy. And what happens is Canada and America and Europe, France, France, uh, France Germany, etc., become accomplices in pushing forth draconian medieval law. And that's why you see ISIS emboldened and the radicalization of our Muslim communities within these constructs. You mentioned to me uh, while we were getting ready that there's material passed around in mosques in uh, not far from where you live yeah. that helps radicalize people and it's often doctored photos. Yeah. Um, how do you fight back against that? We've just had six more kids out of Montreal leave to go and fight in Syria. You can't pick a major city in this country uh, that ha doesn't have a, a large number of kids that have decided to join one of the jihadist movements. Um, in fact, we've got more. If I read James Clapper, the National Intelligence Director in Washington last week correctly, Canada has sent more jihadists over to join the fight than America has, and your population is ten times the size. So how do you fight back against that indoctrination going on in the mosque if you're not part of the mosque? And, and the U.K. had a number that there were more Muslims fighting with ISIS than there were in their own military, which tells you something. Yeah. So the bottom line is, is that this is a new Cold War. And we won the Cold War against the Soviets by having an information operation that was through the U.S. Information Agency and others that created Radio Free Europe, that created uh, a movement against socialism, for capitalism, against Soviet imperialism, the sense that the, the solution to humanity was freedom and democracy and free markets. Right now we're doing none of that. They're spending billions, not only ISIS's millions on the high-tech ideas that they're spreading through the internet. The Saudis as but well. The Saudis have spent tens of billions, hundreds of billions on an information operation that is about Islamic supremacism and only one or two interpretations of the Quran. The interpretation of the Quran my father and grandfather taught me who were experts in Sharia, you won't be able to find. So this debate is so one-sided. The West needs to start getting into the game of taking sides within the House of Islam, not becoming theologians, let us do that, but at least taking the side of liberty within the House of Islam and thus beginning this, where is Radio Free Islam, Radio Free uh, uh, Middle East? It doesn't exist. And We that, need to make them want Levi's. Like it's, in the Cold War. That's, that's, yeah. that's what the kids in East Germany eventually said, I want to get a pair of Levi's. Let, let me push back a little bit on that because it's, you know, right now, Karen Hughes was doing back in the Bush administration sort of the public diplomacy. If they love America and they see Muslims succeeding, somehow there won't be a problem. Well, 
it's beyond just the, the free market uh, products. It was about the ideas. And we never wanted to, because in order to engage the ideas, you had to prove that theocracy, Islamism, was the problem. And right now, post-Arab awakening, we have huge opportunities. The Egyptians rejected the Brotherhood. The Tunisians, six weeks ago, just rejected the Islamist party in an election. And that's even without any of our help. So imagine if we were in the game of promoting liberty through a Muslim lens for them, with them, and, and you won't need boot, you don't need boots on the ground. There's revolutions happening. But right now, the Khomeinists and the jihadists are dominating that conversation. All right, Zudi, great talking to you. Thanks so much, and Thank keep you. up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate it.